Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a video that is a little bit different from videos that I usually make. I was thinking of filming a reading wrap-up today, but I realized that I haven't done a reading wrap-up since like January, and um, I have read a lot of books since January, and I can't fit all of that into one video. So I knew that that just like wasn't going to work, and then I was trying to think of something else to do because I do want to talk about some of these books that I haven't talked about on my channel almost at all yet. And then I just thought of doing like a book recommendations video, but just like recommending seven I think I have seven random books that I've read recently that I really really loved and I haven't talked about almost at all on my channel So I could just recommend them to you all tell you my thoughts and hopefully you find a new book that you'll really love I love filming recommendation videos They are probably one of my favorite videos to film and I haven't done one in a while And I thought that this would be the perfect way to just recommend a very random assortment of books that I have recently read and really really loved So yeah, without any further ado, let's just get into the seven books that I have to recommend to you all First on my list is a book that I was really excited to read because it's different from what I usually read and even though I expected to like it I surprisingly fell in love with it more than I ever thought I would and that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This book is a YA mystery. I wouldn't really call it a mystery thriller but I guess you could kind of put it in that category. It's actually the first book in a series and it's the only one that's out right now but I'm so happy and excited that it's a series because I can't wait to see where this story goes. It's basically about this girl named Stevie Bell who ends up going to this school called Ellingham Academy and Ellingham Academy is for students who are incredibly bright and they can be really smart or really interested and passionate about one specific topic it doesn't matter what that is and they can be admitted into this school it doesn't really have like an application process or anything and they're very selective it's very odd very strange but Stevie ends up getting into the school because she is very very passionate about true crime she studies it all the time she researches it all the time and it's like her favorite thing to do and she loves the mystery actually that is surrounding Ellingham Academy itself because there was a murder that took place there. In 1936 there was this kidnapping and murder that took place in the school and it became like a really big story and people still talk about it even in Stevie's day which is modern day and so the story actually takes place in two different timelines. We get Stevie's timeline in modern day as she's at this school and she's like learning more about what happened with the crime and then we also have the perspective from the past in the 1930s when the crime actually happened and we get to see how it happened and what was going on with all of that but there are still so many unanswered questions but I absolutely loved this story it was super mysterious. I love the two perspectives and the different timelines. I'm a huge fan of that in books and I really like the way that this one dealt with it as well. I thought the story was really complex and it also wasn't super predictable. I didn't guess what was going to happen at the end and there are still, like I said, so many more questions that I'm assuming the rest of the series will begin to answer and I just can't wait for the rest of the books in this series. Like, I really, really liked it and I didn't think I would like it this much and now I'm super invested and I just need more right now. <laughs> the next recommendation I have is a book that was recommended to me so many times, like countless times over this past year, and I don't know why I didn't pick this book up sooner. I regret that because, wow, it was incredible, and this is genuinely one of my all-time favorite books now, but that book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you don't know what this book is about, it's another story that takes place in two different timelines. So we have our main timeline that's going on with this woman named Monique, who is a journalist, and she ends up getting this story to interview this woman named Evelyn Hugo, who is a very, very famous Hollywood actress, like old Hollywood actress. Think Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor level of stardom, like that's who Evelyn Hugo was. And Monique gets this very strange opportunity to interview her because no one has actually interviewed Evelyn Hugo in several years and she doesn't know why she was chosen for this, but she agrees to go on with it. And then when she meets Evelyn, Evelyn ends up telling her her entire life story. So the second perspective that we get is Evelyn telling her life story to Monique. So we get to see her whole past, everything that happened in her life, everything that happened with her seven husbands, why she had seven husbands, husbands and it's just I don't have words absolutely incredible. <laughs> this is one of the most intricate stories I've ever read in terms of the way that it deals with relationships, the relationships we have with one another and the relationships we have with ourselves. and Evelyn is one of the most well-written characters I have ever read about in my entire life. She can be absolutely detestable, she makes horrible decisions, she's not a good person all the time, but you are still so invested in her because she is so real, like everything about her is so realistic, and oh my god, like I get chills talking about this book because it was just so well written. It also has fantastic representation, like Evelyn is Cuban and it talks about how Hollywood erased that side of her, and she's also bisexual, and that's a very significant part of this entire story, and it's just so, so fabulous. Like. I 
I can't recommend this enough. It is an adult book and I know I mostly talk about YA on here even though I do like to read a lot of adult. This is probably like my favorite adult book I've ever read. Like no joke, it's just so good. But I just love this book so much I immediately started reading all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's other books because I just wanted more of her writing and sadly I don't like any of them as much as I like this one. Like this one is still the most incredible one in my opinion but I do love her other books as well. But nothing is Evelyn Hugo. Like nothing and everyone needs to read it. The next book on my list is one that I have talked about a little bit more often on my channel than some of these other ones that I don't think I've ever mentioned but it's still one that I wanted to talk about a little bit more and that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. I actually filmed a reading vlog I think while I was reading this book and I talked about it a little bit in there and I've talked about it in maybe one other video but if you don't know what this book is about it follows the story of this girl whose mother dies by suicide and then her mother ends up turning into a bird and then she thinks that her mother is like sending her these messages through this bird. It's magical realism so like that makes more sense in the context of the story but it's such a well-written absolutely heartbreaking breathtaking book. Obviously it's a story about suicide which is a very difficult thing to read about but there is something about this story that makes me feel so incredibly hopeful and I think it's because of the way that it deals with the subject matter and I think that a book that can talk about suicide yet make you feel extremely hopeful by the end and throughout the entire story I never felt like hopeless I never felt like there was no like happy ending in sight and even though there isn't a necessarily like cliche happy ending there is still hope throughout it which is just beautiful to me. Like a book that can do that is absolutely incredible and you know how much time, attention, and detail went into crafting this story and I have so much appreciation for that. It's beautifully written. It talks about so many important things. I love the characters because they're all flawed and messy and so real and yeah it's just such a wonderful, wonderful contemporary. I think it's absolutely a very underrated book. I know I see it around sometimes but I feel like not that many people have read it and not that many people talk about it and I think more people should because it deserves so so much more love and attention. The next book I have is actually another book that made me feel really hopeful and also really really happy and this is actually like a graphic novel and that is Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien Too. I don't really know how to describe this. I feel like I've seen this book all over Twitter but I feel like I haven't actually heard almost anyone talking about reading it. Apart from Lin-Manuel Miranda who actually has a blurb on the back of this, I've seen him tweet about it and that's how I found out about this book in the first place. But basically this book is about life. It's about relationships, it's about who we are as people, it's about how we treat each other, how we treat the world around us, how we perceive ourselves and others, and I don't really know how to describe it in any other way than that. It feels kind of like a children's book because it's written with like improper grammar, all the words are spelled wrong, and obviously like that's intentional, but there's something about it that is just so deeply powerful and I, I can't even express it. Like I was crying the whole time I was reading this even though it was like happy, like they were happy tears, but it also gave me like a nostalgic feeling. Like I don't know how to describe what this book made me feel. I just think it's something that everyone should read. It reads in some ways like a book of poetry because it has very powerful one-liners, but a lot like the modern poetry, a lot of the poetry I like to read, like Milk and Honey and The Princess Saves Herself in this one, that's very simplistic yet really powerful. And I really appreciate things like that. I feel like a lot of people think that they're like too simple and like obvious, which is what I hear a lot of people say. But to me, it's like the bare bones of what we all feel and what we're all trying to understand. And the fact that people can say those in just simplistic words means so much. And I don't know, I think that it's really, really beautiful. But yeah, it's such a beautiful little gem that came to me at such a good time and it made me so incredibly happy. And I'm so grateful to this. Like I will reread this all the time. I already know that. Like I can see myself just picking this up whenever I'm sad just to put a smile on my face. The next book I have to recommend is one that I don't think I was ever planning on reading initially, but I'd seen some people like at school on campus and stuff reading it and some people in my classes were talking about it a little bit. And then I saw it on Good reads and I was like, you know, I'll just try it. We'll see how it goes. And that book or actually short story collection is Her Body and Other Parties. Like I said, this is a short story collection and I'm pretty sure it's eight, I think so. Yes, eight short stories that are all very much about women. <laughs> their bodies, sexuality, and they have a lot of underlying feminist themes and also very explicitly overt feminist themes as well. But it's truly just like one of the best things I have 
ever read because nothing I've read, at least recently, has made me think the way this book makes me think. I just wanted to sit down and discuss literally every single story because I would finish it and I'd be like, I don't even understand what I just read. And not in like a bad way where I was confused, just like in the way where I had so many questions about what I was reading because it's absolutely something that needs to be discussed. Like I just want to join a book club so we can all read this and then I'll like talk about it or like take a class on this book and discuss it in class and like write papers on it because that's what this book is. I loved all of the stories but there were a couple that really really stood out to me that I fell in love with and then one in particular which is actually inspired by Law & Order SVU. It's called Especially Heinous and it's basically like goes through the first 12 seasons of Law & Order SVU and honestly like I can't even describe it. If you've seen Law & Order SVU I feel like that's the only way you can actually really truly appreciate it um, and I've seen like almost all of it. My sister and I watch it all the time and it's like her favorite show. So uh, when I read that story, I was just in awe. Like that story alone deserves all of the awards. It's so incredibly well written and I, I can't even express how much I liked this. <laughs> so yeah, if you're looking for a short story collection to read, I highly recommend picking this one up. Like don't even think about anything else. Just read this right now. It's so good and you will not stop thinking about it for days. Like I couldn't stop thinking about it. I still can't stop thinking about it. The next book I have to recommend is one that I've been wanting to read for a very long time actually and I don't know why it took me so long to pick it up. I think I just wasn't in the mood for a classic because this one is a classic, but I was recently and I picked it up and I fell in love and I think this might actually now be my favorite classic I've ever read. Potentially, I don't know, don't hold me to that. But that book is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I picked this book up last summer when I was in Paris at Shakespeare and Company because one, like the cover, and two, because I'd heard a lot of people say that they really, really loved Rebecca and that it's one of their favorite classics. And from what I'd heard about the story, it seemed like something I would really enjoy and I wanted to try it out. So I got it there and I am now obsessed. <laughs> if you don't know what it's about, it's basically about this woman who remains nameless throughout the entire book and she ends up marrying this man when she's like on this trip. She meets him, they kind of fall in love, they get married really really quickly and he has recently lost his wife and he's been very sad because of that but they end up getting married. She ends up moving to his estate with him and then she realizes she doesn't really know anything about this man and that he's still kind of hung up on his ex-wife whose presence very much still lingers in this house and everyone who works in the house still loves her very much, the wife's name being Rebecca. And Rebecca is just still so present in all of their lives that the main character just doesn't know how to deal with this. So it's kind of a little bit like, I wouldn't say a gothic romance necessarily, but kind of has that like Wuthering Heights, Bronte sisters vibe, but also it's very much a mystery and it's also a very interpersonal book. The whole theme of the story revolves around identity, hence why the main character remains nameless the entire time. And I really, really loved the way that the book talked about that. And also, I loved the way that it was written. It was so descriptive, but not in a way that was overwhelming or irritating and I just like wanted to skim through because I didn't care about what the details of this house looked like. No, I cared about like every little detail. And it's like not super, super long, but it's like a decent length, yet it flies by and it's so enjoyable. Honestly, as I was reading this the entire time, I was just thinking, why didn't I have to read this in high school because this is so much better than like Huckleberry Finn and The Fountainhead. Like I don't know why they didn't let us read this and why they made us read those other books but like if I were to teach an English class in high school I would definitely assign this as reading. But yeah anyway I really love this book and it kind of put me in the mood to read some more classics again because it's been a while since I've read some classics and I definitely think I'm gonna pick some more up because of it but yeah highly highly recommend if you're looking for a classic to read that doesn't feel overwhelmingly like a classic if you know what I mean. But yeah so so good and I'm so happy that I loved it. All right, and the very last book that I have to recommend is one that I didn't think I would actually read. I didn't think that it was something that I would necessarily enjoy very much just because of the way that it was described and also because I thought it would be too much for me. But one day I just saw it and I decided to pick it up and I started reading it and then I couldn't stop and then I couldn't stop crying and now it's literally one of my all-time favorite books. So that goes to show you, sometimes you don't think you're gonna read something and then it ends up being like one of your favorite things ever. So I'm really 
happy that I read it, but that book is Winter Girls by Lori Halls Anderson. This is my first Lori Halls Anderson book. I've never read Speak, I haven't read any of her other books, and like I said, I wasn't even planning on picking this one up, but I am so incredibly happy that I did. <laughs> if you don't know what this book is about, it's about this girl named Leah who had a best friend named Cassie who recently died, and both of these girls were struggling with eating disorders, Leah with anorexia and Cassie with bulimia, and it's a story entirely about eating disorders, but it's written in a way that feels almost like magical, and I don't mean that in a way where it's romanticizing eating disorders in any sort of way. It's just the writing and the descriptions of what is going on inside of Leah's head are done in such a way that it almost feels like magic, but in most cases very very dark and not like the happy magic that you would think of. And I say that it's not like there is actual magic in this book, like I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. It's just the way that the book is written and the descriptions that are put in here. And this is a very hard book for me to talk about because it made me so incredibly emotional and because it meant so much to me. So I like can't say too much and obviously I put a content warning on it for eating disorders and self-harm so be wary before you read this if you decide to do so but in terms of books I've read about mental illness this is absolutely one of my favorite ones I have ever read. Like for me it's this and Turtles All the Way Down that both just mean so much to me and just have changed me in a lot of ways and changed the way that I perceive a lot of things and came to me at exactly the right time when I needed them. So yeah this is one that I definitely recommend if you're in the right place to read it, if you're in the right headspace. I can't even describe how much it means to me or even the details of why it means so much to me because I will just like start crying but I definitely definitely recommend it. It's just such an exceptionally well-written and well-crafted book and I know I'm gonna reread it so many times. All right so there you all have it. That is it for my list of seven random books recommendations. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in this video, if you liked any of them as well, or if you have any books that you think I'll really enjoy. I'd love to hear any of your recommendations as well. If you like videos like this and you'd like to see me do some just like more random book recommendations, please let me know that as well because I'd be happy to do that. I much prefer doing this than doing like reading wrap-ups and just like letting you guys know about some books that I've read recently that I just really really loved because honestly like I read too much to talk about all of them, um, which isn't a problem. I just like can't talk about all of them all at once because it gets too overwhelming. So yeah, if you want to see some more just like random reading recommendation videos that don't have any sort of theme to them, or if you want to see themed ones, please let me know. I'll be happy to make any of them. But that is it for this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!